This is the third video on exponentials and logarithms where we're going to have a look at the gradient of the exponential function. The exponential function is this, y equals e to the power of x. We saw that introduced in the last video where Euler's number is this 2.718 to three decimal places. Its graph looks roughly, well, its graph is that. So, we also saw in the last video that this number comes from wherever you have a situation where you have continuous growth continuous change where the change is proportional to the population you have in the first place. This number always appears in those situations. When we covered differentiation earlier on this year, when we covered gradient, we know that that's all about changes as well. When we talk about the gradient, it's the change in the y divided by the change in the x. The gradient function is all about how the y uh, coordinate or the y quantity changes with respect to the x quantity. So there is a, hopefully you can see there's a link between these two topics. And in fact, the exponential function is very unique in that when you differentiate it, it is its own gradient function, i.e. it doesn't change. When you differentiate the exponential function, it does not change. Now, in terms of the AS, you don't need to know any more than that. You don't need to prove it. However, if you want to, um, if you want to look at, work ahead to the year 13 work and you want to see why that's the case in more detail than me just showing you this, um, go ahead and look at the year 13 differentiation playlist. And I think it's video two um, where I prove if you differentiate this, you get this. However, more importantly is what does this actually mean? Well, what it's saying is, its gradient function is the same as your original function. I.e. the gradient at each point on the curve is equal to the y-coordinate on that curve. So, for example, um, at this point here, when x is 0, if I was to draw a tangent here, the gradient at this point is 1. And I know the gradient of this tangent is 1 because the y coordinate at that point is 1. If I was to draw a tangent here, when x is 1, I know the gradient of that tangent is 2.718, or e. And I know that because the y coordinate at 1 is 2.718, or e. So if I pick any point on this curve, I know its gradient is equal to the y-coordinate on the, that curve. It is its own gradient function, i.e. the change at that point is the same as the amount at that point. So, the exponential function differentiates to the exponential function. If we have a constant multiplied by our x there, then by something called the chain rule, which again, if you want to look ahead to next year's work, um, it's the third video on the differentiation playlist, I think. If we have a constant inside here and we differentiate e to the kx, then I will get e to the kx, but multiplied by whatever that constant there is. So basically, the exponential will stay the same, but I will multiply it by whatever it, the constant is there. So, you need to know these results for year 12, um, year 12 maths. In year 13 maths, you'll, prove, you'll, you'll see where they come from. But for now, you just need to know them. And use them. So, let's have a few examples of using them. So, I've got y equals e to the power 4x. If I want to differentiate that, So the exponential stays the same, so it'll be e to the power of 4x, but I need to multiply it by 4, because that's what I've got on the inside here. So this is just using this result here, where k is 4. Next example, I've got y equals e, uh, 5e to the power of 2x plus 6x. So, I will have um, now the e to the power of 2x will stay the same, it will be e to the power of 2x, but when I differentiate it, I need to times by 2, just like up here I times by 4. 
So I would times that by two, but I've got five lots of that. Let me just do that again a little bit more slowly. So the e to the two x differentiates to be two e to the two x. Just as the same way as the e to the four x differentiates to be four e to the four x. But I've got five in front there, so I've got five lots of this, which is 10 e to the two x. And the 6x, well that just differentiates to be 6. That's nothing to do with log of uh, exponentials, that's just using what we did in the differentiation. We've seen the 6x differentiates to be 6. There we go, so when I differentiate this, I get this. Uh, next example says, find the gradient of the curves when x equals 2. So let's differentiate this first of all, I've got 6 e to the half x. So e to the half x differentiates to be half e to the half x. Just moving that half down. Um, so e to the half, e to the half x. But I've got six lots of that. So six lots of the half is three. Um, then I've got minus 3x, so the 3x differentiates just to be 3. So this is my gradient function. And I want to find the gradient when x is 2. So if I substitute 2 into this, I've got 3e to the 1 half times 2 minus 3. The half times 2 is 1. So I've got 3e e to the 1 minus 3. And e to the power 1 is just e. So I don't really need that power 1 there. You can keep the power 1 if you want, but I don't really need it there. And so that is my gradient, 3e e minus 3. I could maybe factorise the 3 outside. But what I'm not going to do is use the calculator. This is an exact number. This is great. This is perfect. I'm happy with this. Um, this is exact. I don't want to start using the calculator and getting some decimal nonsense. This is perfect. Leave it like that. Next example. Uh, so, e to the 4x differentiates to be 4 e to the 4x, but I've got three of them, so that's 12 e to the 4x. e to the x differentiates to be e to the x. Now if I substitute 2 into this, I will get 12 lots of e to the 4 times 2 is 8, minus e to the power 2. And that's pretty much as simple as I could get it. Um, I could maybe factorise e squared outside there, but I don't think it particularly makes it any, more, any simpler. But I'll leave it like that, that's its exact gradient at that point. Okay, last example. Uh, we're going to do a quick bit of mathematical modelling. It says a population on an island is given by p equals 20,000 times e to the power 0.2 t, where t is measured in year, years. I want to find the rate. So remember, the rate is, is how it's changing with respect to time, at which the population is growing after two years. So when I see that word, I'm thinking, right, rate of change, I'm differentiating. So I'm differentiating my exponential function. So if p equals 20,000, e to the 0.2t, if I'm going to differentiate that, I'm differentiating my p, the population, with, with respect to time. So how does the population change with time? I would have, right, so, just look at this, I've got e to the power 0.2t, that would differentiate to be 0.2e to the 0.2. But I've got 20,000 of them. So 20,000 times 0.2e to the 0.2t. Uh, 20,000 times 0.2 is 4,000, I think. 
we wanted it after two years, I think. Yeah, after two years. So t is two. So 4,000 times e to the 0 0.2 times two, which is 4,000 times e to the 0 0.4. Um, and I could leave my answer like that in exact form, or I might, um, if I could substitute this into my calculator to get the exact population. Because we're talking about in context here, we're talking about a population, um, I will actually substitute that into my calculator because, because it is in context. Um, and it doesn't really make sense to leave a population in terms of an exponential, even though that's exact doesn't really make sense. So uh, if I do that, I get that the population is 5,967. And there we go. So just remember these key results. These are the results you can use over and over again.